Join me this week as I cruise solo from Hemel Hempstead to the beautiful port of Berkhamsted. Good morning from just outside of Hemel Hempstead. The boat is extremely quiet. That's extremely dark. Yeah, Danny's not here. Dogs have gone home. Just me left to fend for myself. I've been next to railway in what feels like forever. I've forgotten how loud it is, but I do quite like it. Turn into a bit of a train spotter. When we're by we were by Heathrow, I turned into a plane spotter, so back to a train spotter now. Thanks to Joe and Georgie who put me a message on Facebook. There's been a swing bridge that should have been opened up on the 15th from its winter stoppage. I think it's been repaired. Um, it's still not sh still not officially open now, and it's the 26th. <laughs> So they messaged me and today it's actually open all day so I'm going to make sure I get up that far. Um, just coming past Hemel Marina in a minute, I just pulled in to um, make a cup of tea. I'm aiming for Berkhamstead. I don't know if I'll make it today or not. It's about 20 past one now. Where am I? Where have we got? Oh, that's Berkhamstead. Um, I'm almost there. Ah, right, well, we're going to Berkhamstead anyway. Past Winkwell Spring Bridge. Got another lock or two to do. Maybe a bit more than that, actually. I think it's couple hang on we're over the place here five <laughs> i was way off six seven near there seven locks i'm not doing that today uh, do a couple more get through that swing bridge and then more up somewhere quiet well quiet ish because the train line follows it all the way up now fan belt stretched again we'll come loose it's fine for a good couple of weeks
Yeah, thanks for the heads up, that was handy. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it's quiet, especially now the dogs are gone as well. Lovely project, that. I think I'd get the feeling I'd bitten off more than I could chew. Barn. Perfectly. Just quickly, I want to say a huge thank you to Craft Insure for sponsoring another one of our videos. This is actually our fourth year insuring Lady Penny Bun with Craft Insure. Insurance is probably one of the most important things you can buy for the boat, so it's critical that you actually trust who you're insuring with. Craft Insure have been in business for over 20 years now. They were set up by boaters for boaters. They'll insure anything from narrow boats to ribs, paddle boards, wide beams, yachts, everything. They've genuinely got the easiest to use website, Boat Value. Cruiser, flames, none, agree, bang. They give you two different options. So if you're happy with 300 pounds excess, you'll only pay 235 a year. And if you're happy with 150 excess, you'll only pay 272 a year. That's based on our figures for our boat. Newer boats tend to be a little bit cheaper, I think. 2010? Yeah. Newer boat, about half the price. <clears throat> 300 pound excess, pay 112. 150 pound excess, pay 143. Thank you, Craft Insure. Now back to the video. Morning. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> it's <really> hot. <laughs> I've been sat there for about five, ten minutes just trying to get my words together, really. I can never articulate quite how I'm feeling. It's something I'd like to work on. Um, but I just want to say thank you, really. I met so many lovely people on that cruise um, from people just helping out on locks. Joe and Georgie giving a heads up on the swing bridge. They also gave me a beer, which is going to be this week's beer of the week. I'll do that later on. It's only about eight o'clock. Can't quite do it yet. And so many of you have reached out since Danny's moved away just to either offer me out for a beer or loads of things like that. Just to, yeah, just really feeling the love at the minute. So I really appreciate it. Me and Danny are doing fine. Um, she's been away for, I want to say a week. I reckon just under a week now. Um, we're messaging every day. 
Uh, we're going to meet up in a couple of weeks time anyway we've got a little trip booked into Europe so yeah we're going to be seeing each other sort of once a month at least I'd have thought it's definitely different on the boat but yeah really appreciate everyone's message so thank you as I was mooring up you've probably seen quite a bit of smoke coming out I noticed that as the day was going on the engine was smoking more and more and I sort of cast my mind back the fuel guy when he was filling up our diesel it was only last week no not even last week like a couple of days ago and um, we'd only used 37 litres I think in just over a month, about a month and a half since we last topped up. Um, but the fuel was shooting back up the filler, which he said indicates either you've got a blocked breather or you haven't got a breather at all. I can always remember this one actually being quite difficult for all the different boat yards to fill up with diesel. So I took the filler cap off, ran the engine again, and the smoke like all but disappeared. It was sort of smoking as much as BMC should normally smoke. So yeah, that was great. Thank you to BMW Fuel. I don't know the guy's name, but it's, he's on BMW and W Fuel Boat. So thank you. Great tip. Today I'm not sure whether to cruise up to Berkhamstead. I've actually got a dry dock book to do our black in from early April. Whilst we go away, I've got the marina booked and then they've got a dry dock there as well. So I'll be doing the black in myself. I know we spoke about getting it done by some someone else on our costs of living on narrowboat video, but I've actually found someone that let me do it DIY. That reminds me I need to order some anodes and I need to order the actual bitumen itself. If anyone's got any tips on welding the anodes on, I'm gonna do it myself. I think it'd be good practice. And it seems this one, if you bring in outside people to do it it just seems a bit awkward and for the sake of like two welds on four anodes it just seems a bit overkill to get someone in that I want to learn to weld better anyway so I might do some practice off the boat before I start yeah <laughs> completely messing it up yeah if anyone's got any tips on welding anodes I some of you said not to use zinc anodes anymore and I was reading up on it it's basically as that for anyone that doesn't know anodes anodes are sacrificial bits of metal that break down and corrode before your hull does, so it's a weaker metal than the steel. Um, traditionally, it's been zinc, from what I understand, and basically zinc builds up on when it as they corrode, they the mineral the zinc builds up on the bed of canals, rivers, and the sea. And zinc's really not that good for marine life, so I'm told. Apparently, aluminium's meant to be better now. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've seen magnesium ones as well, but I think aluminium's aluminium are the ones to go for but I also read that when you change between them you can't leave your old ones on whereas normally if I was to go leave these zinc ones on I could just weld new zinc ones above them because these other zinc ones have still got a bit of life left in them if you put on a different metal next to the other ones basically that aluminium will just protect your zinc anodes then rather than protecting your hull it's going to go to the weaker metal so the, that it will protect the next strongest metal so Aluminium is weaker than zinc. Zinc's weaker than steel, so in that order. So if you put aluminium ones on top of zinc ones, it's going to protect the zinc. That was a complete ramble, but I think that's right. Um, not sure whether to cruise today or not. It's going to rain for about 12 for a bit. Just got back from Wakes in time before it started raining. Quite a few of you recommended this to clean the cratch cover with, because I scrubbed it one side of it um, probably a month ago now, and the algae's just coming back. So this is wet and forget. Uh, mold and lichen, mold, lichen and algae remover. Doesn't actually say for um, fabric, but quite a few of you recommended it, so I'll give that a go. I was going to do it on the water point today if I went for a few locks, but I just can't be bothered to get soaking wet. So I might save it for tomorrow and go cruising tomorrow. <sighs> hate days like this. Just miserable, isn't it? Roll on the summer. It's about midday now, so I might as well do bit of the week. Thanks again, Joe and Georgie. Give me a bottle of Old Empire IPA. Now, me and Danny, back a couple of years ago, did a tour of Bath Ales, and we we're talking about different um, styles of beer and stuff, and how IPAs have developed from traditional English IPA, India Pale Ale, to sort of the more West Coast, modern, really hoppy American stuff. Um, and the tour guide at the time said, if you want to try like a real traditional Old English IPA, then Old empire ipas want to go for i've had it once before um really quite enjoyed it it's quite strong as it should be for an ipa 5.7 percent for a traditional one a memorable and deceptively easy drinking ipa this is an authentic recreation of the beer style created for and enjoyed throughout the empire 
Goldings, Fuggles and American Cascade Hops combine to give it a crisp citrus hop aroma with a balanced bittersweet finish. Cheers. Mmm, that is good. There we go. I don't know if I've had a bad beer on here yet. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't already know where IPA gets its name from, back during Britain's empire, British Empire? British Empire. Basically the Brits would take beer with them but for it to travel the distance they'd have to increase the alcohol percentage and hops is the main thing that um, which call it preserves beer so they upped the hops in the beer and that helped keep it for longer and helped it travel further. Well the rain's pretty much stopped well it has stopped it's just a bit windy now and I've had it up to here we've been stuck inside doing nothing well been researching the journey actually to be fair I've been looking at where to next in the Ellsbury arm and stuff like that um, but I'm gonna try and track down the um, blocked or non-existent fuel breather in the engine bay that's a bloody boot outside Just remembered a little trick that my dad taught me, that his dad taught him. I don't know who taught him. Newspaper. Front fire. Cheers, Dad. So, got these two which go, one goes fuel win, one is the like overflow, I guess. I can't see anything else on top. That's the fuel inlet. That's the one that connects the two tanks. And then that's the outlet for the diesel heater, which was just left open before. So maybe they were using that as a breather, but there's no hose on it. I put all that on. And literally nothing else. So no breather. Shit. So these tanks actually connected by that bigger, older pipe at the bottom. I put this one in because there was two holes left here. So I could just take this out for now and let them breathe through here, but I'll just have to go careful when we next fill up and then come up with a longer term plan, put a proper breather in. Good morning, everyone. Rain stopped, still a little bit windy. Um, I'm gonna head into Berkhamstead today. There's a water point which I can hopefully use the wet and forget. It says to apply it on the cover whilst the cover's dry spray this on four or five to one ratio to mix of water one part of this five parts water spray it on let it soak in it should kill all the algae off sounds pretty corrosive though it's supposed to um wear gloves and uh, eye mask which i have actually got here made in new zealand we got a few of you guys watching us from new zealand have you used this yesterday i did actually manage to um clear the bilge out a little bit bit better isn't it I've just taken the pipe across the top off for now so you can breathe in both tanks. Just until I come up with a permanent fix. We've actually got a newer engine coming soon, which I'll talk about in another video. Um, yeah, really excited. This what touch wood, I don't, actually I'm not even gonna say it, but it's been running. <laughs>
bit of a strange water point here, right next to the petrol station. <laughs> Just had a bit of a naughty idea for lunch. Got some leftover French onion soup that I made. It's probably quite dark. Some sourdough I made the other day. I might make another batch today and actually show you. That'd be a good thing to do. Try and do that cratch cover in a minute. Find a more in spot and then just basically spray it with that. Um, wet and forget. Sourdough I made the other day. I'm gonna make French onion soup and cheese on toast. Bear with me. I managed to get a nice little spot here just by the park. I was hoping to do that wet and forget today, but it says you're supposed to um, do it on a dry day and it literally, the weather's not making his mind up. It says it's gonna rain for another hour or so. If I get time to do it this evening, I will. But if not, I'll do it tomorrow. Some lovely bridges around here though. Some of the best bridges I've seen. I don't know if they would have all traditionally been painted like this, but they're uh, stunning. Love them. I'm gonna go for it. I've just put my five to one ratio in roughly. Basically, you've got to spray that on the cover. Let's give it a go. So that's a coat of the magic stuff over the whole cratch cover. Second application, one to two months after the first, may also assist for treating persistent contamination. So I'll show you it next week actually, what it looks like, see if it's killed off, see if I can pressure wash it or at least scrub it to get rid of some of the bulkier bits. I think that's me for this week. Just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's sticking around watching just me, just Joe, as I should probably call the channel now. Thank you so much for all the messages. Thank you to everyone I meet along the canal as well. Met so many lovely people this week especially. Join me next week. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but probably more cruising. And I promise next week I'll be baking some bread. I'll share the recipe for the sourdough. Thank you so much. Thank you to our patrons. See you next week. <laughs>